Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, I actually wanted to discuss something that was going on in JP, and then kind of talk about it in relation to NA, which is getting it in two years. Um, I want to talk about the new bus support, which is Tomomovich, and kind of give my thoughts on her, and kind of what the state of Buster, what she does to the state of Buster. Does this mean Merlin is useless? Spoiler, I guess, for later on in the video. No, I don't think it does mean that. But I'm going to kind of give my thoughts on her, give my general feelings right now. She literally just released uh, yesterday, I think. No, two days ago by the time you hear this. Um, so there's still a lot of stuff kind of unfoiling from the new anniversary. And there's still a lot of other new things to kind of look forward to. So a lot of things will change in the two years before we get her. Chances are there'll be a new quick uh, support by that time as well. So, uh, But yeah, that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. You can comment and tell me how you feel about the new Buster support that's uh, kind of come down from us from over on JP. And you can subscribe to me if you want some more video stuff. So, Tomovich, who is she? Well, she's in the new Lost Belt story. She's been there since basically the prologue. Um, this is a good version of her because you can see her name of Light. And technically the one in story is the evil version. So you don't have to feel bad about having what is basically... For the people out there who don't... <laughs> For the, well, first of all, there are people out there who just think she's hot, and they're like, whatever, I'll get that hot lady, no problem. But for the people who, she's done a lot of bad stuff in the story, so it's kind of like, I don't really want her around if she's that same evil person, so this is their way of saying, it's not, she's good, don't worry about it. So sure, fair enough. Let's actually look at her skills. Um, you can tell I've had to make multiple videos because I started with the third skill. Uh, <laughs> the first skill is Innovator Bunny. Charges one ally's MP gauge. Reduces their skill kill down by two. Deal 1000 damage without killing to the party. That's a demerit. At level 1 it is 30% MP charge. and level 10 it is 50%. This skill is amazing because I can actually go to Merlin who's over here. Look at his first skill. This is the one thing I've never liked about Merlin, which is you can go back to the time he was released. I didn't like it back then. I was definitely a dude who was like, I'm pro Waver and I'm not pro uh, Merlin. Is that he charges the party's MP gauge by only 20%. That's it. The only other That's the only way you can really get MP gauge with him. That's, that does not include his AoE um, Noble Phantasm itself. Um, so Vich comes out. 50%. So the reason that I don't like this is that it actually means that in a lot of scenarios where you are grinding, which is what you're doing in 90% of the time you're playing Fake Grand Order, it is not possible for you to three turn a lot of events. So it ends up being that you have to make a lot of wonky teams. Usually they begin with um, you using uh, Arash to completely nuke the, <laughs> the stage turn one. And then you have to have a kaleidoscope or some other kind of NP gauge starting CE and then you kind of go from there. So it took a lot of effort and a lot of like missed opportunities when grinding to kind of get it done if you wanted to do it that way. With Vich on the other hand though, because of this little handy ability right here which is reduces their skill to cooldown by 2, uh, you can actually now loop with Buster, believe it or not. Because the reason is, is that this reduced their cooldown by 2 is extremely helpful if they have a skill cooldown which is like and you can see why this is such a high because it's at eight because it's a really good skill the ability to produce skill cooldowns is extremely good so if you have a skill that cools down on turn five and you use two of these on your um your unit after they use that skill basically they get back that skill that's that's kind of crazy it's kind of nutty uh, and it can be especially good if you're using someone like, uh, like to give an example of a Berserker unit. Because this is who you want. A Berserker Buster, everyone's favorite combo of units. You can look at Arjuna Altar. And you can see that this is a 5 turn, he gets this back. 5 turn, he gets this back. 7 turn, doesn't get this back. But he gets these two back, and these all have 3 turn cooldowns. So that means he is getting at least 60% NP from this, 1,200% Buster Absorption, 60% Attack Increase, and then 50% Debuff Damage up uh, against certain stuff. And that's pretty funny that he gets all that stuff back and he becomes just way stronger than needed. I think there's other examples for other Berserkers. Let me look real quick. Let me see. Who's a good example here who's a big Buster boy? 
Kintoki, everyone's favorite boy. So... Oh, this only lasts for one turn. So, but you could, in theory, actually use this. So you could get 100% from this. This, obviously, you would not be able to get back, unfortunately. Natural body. You would get this back, for sure. Increase on offense, debuff, resistance for three turns. You would be able to get that back. Though maybe not the best example. Even though I said he's a good boy, he ended up being looking at it going, oh, Actually, you're not that amazing when I look at you now. I mean, oh, you know who's actually a good example? Who is a very good Buster Servant? Saber. Who is of the Saber class. You get this back, you get Charisma back, you get this ability back! Uh, so you just get the 50% Buster damage up again, really nice. And you'd be able to get this thing back as well. So you'd be able to get all her skills back by doing this. So you can see here, this has a lot of good implementation for a lot of Buster stuff, and it can be really fun to kind of play around with. And then there's other Mystic Codes as well that I forgot completely that you can use this with. So you don't have to use... Um, let me see if I can actually find it here. No event, media, skills... Master skills. Mystic Code... Let me see, which one is it? Is it this one? This one, the Eye of Midget. So you can reduce one servant's skills by two. So that is effectively a six turn skill cooldown for one unit. So that ends up being so that you can actually get that ability back with um, Arjuna Altar if you so want. Very good skill. Exactly what Buster needed. A lot of fun ways to play it. It gives what Buster needs in a very cool way, which is what I like. And I think it's balanced well because it has an 8 turn cooldown. So she doesn't have a 5 turn cooldown, which I think would honestly kind of break things. But Aptitude for Slaughter Man, A. Eh? Increases 1 ally's damage against human enemies for 3 turns. Increases their damage against enemies with the man attribute for 3 turns. Grants them on attack activate buff for 3 turns. Charges their NP gauge when normal attacking with buster cards. And grains crit stars. Human damage up is 50%, 50% for man damage, and 10% NP gauge back when you hit with a buster card, and 20 crit stars at level 10. So if you use two of these, it is 100%, 100%, 20%, and 40 crit stars, and that is, of course, assuming you are using um, two vitches on the rotation. Very good. Another thing that was kind of bad about... It's actually the one bad thing about buster cards is that they deal a lot of damage, but they actually don't give you any NP uh, stuff at all. Quick does, and so does Arts, which is why they're so good for looping. Um, and now you can kind of actually do this now. Now, obviously, what the problem with a lot of Buster stuff is that most Buster <laughs> dudes are going to be dead. But if they, you're fighting against the node that has one dude who has a lot of HP, you're going to be you're going to be very easily able to get a lot of NP back, and that helps with a lot of like looping purposes stuff. Um, so it's a very nice skill here. The other good thing about this skill, and we're going to go back to Merlin, because it's important to look at the current Buster support. This grants party invincibility for one turn. This is a defensive skill. Completely different from this skill. Meaning that if you want to go more defensive, you would have to actually swap out one of your Viches for Merlin. So that's actually some synergy you got going on there. And next we have the third skill. Increases one ally's buster card performance for three turns, increases their crit damage for buster cards for three turns, increases their crit star absorption of buster cards for three turns, 50%, 50%, 500%, this is on six turn cooldown, and then you go to Merlin, he is, increases one ally's buster performance for, for three turns, increases their max HP for three turns, increases their crit damage for one turn, 50%, 3000, and 100% crit damage up, again, slightly more defensive, the crit damage only lasts for one turn, which is a bummer, but it is more damage. Vich sacrifices slightly less damage, so if you're using two, you need to use two Viches to reach 100% um, crit damage. But the good thing is, is that it lasts for three turns, which is very useful, very nice. Um, and then also the Buster cards, you'll guarantee that they always get them because they have crit absorption on them. And of course, 50% and Buster performance is to be expected. This is her passive skills, writing B, independent action EX, uh, independent manifestation C, shapeshift A, and goddess metamorphosis guns B. 
which increases her own NP damage by 20%, which is kind of important. A pen skills are something that I really can't talk about right now because uh, they gave it to everyone and not of it is fully translated. And <laughs> the thing you basically need to know is that I think you can buff the first skill so it gets increased to own an extra attack performance. The second skill, the second one starts so battle starts battle with MP gauge, which you can go up to 20%. And then the third skill is increase on attack against whatever element specific. Like, for example, um, Gil has this for writers, and Vich has it for uh, archers. And finally, her noble phantasm is not a support one. It is an attack one that is also kind of support. So it increases on attack by 20% for one turn, deals damage to all enemies, reduces their MP gauge by one tick. So damage is 300% at uh, level 1, and if it's at level 5, it is 500%, so it's not the most damaging thing in the world. Uh, charges party MP gauge by 10% at charge 1, and if you get it all the way to level uh, 500%, it's 30%. Uh, and the thing that's kind of nice about this is that she actually ends up being able to be the Buster AoE unit for looping purposes for Buster... Because she actually has her own damaging uh, AoE kind of battle, so that kind of makes one thing better. So if you're fighting against a bunch of riders, you can totally use her for that. And she actually has two buster cards with her, so she works out perfectly fine. Only one arts card and two quicks, so not too bad. And also, like I said, this is an attack-based uh, Noble Phantasm, different from Merlin, who is more support. So that is Vich. She's coming in two years, and the reason I really wanted to talk about her is that I feel like there was a lot of people on NA... So here's the timing of it. Sunday hits. It's summer three for NA. A lot of people go summon for Merlin. They tune into the Japanese stream or they start seeing people on Twitter or the Reddit or wherever they get their JP, uh, their Fago news from. Start talking about Tomomovich, saying she is the new Buster support. She's better, which I think she is better in terms of a lot of things. The only thing she isn't better than him is defense wise. Merlin is still better, so you still bring Merlin if it was anything defensive. Like, she just doesn't really have any defensive measures here, unless the unit you're bringing for the fight can also give her, give the party defense in some way, which, you know, valid in some cases. Um, but it is something to kind of think about when you're using Buster, because I think Buster ends up being a very squishy team overall. So still usable with Merlin. But anyway, they hear a lot of people talking about a new Buster support saying, Oh my god, I can't believe it, new Buster support. Hype, 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 hype. Coming in two years, and they just finished summoning for Merlin. Who is basically now old news, because Herb Merlin, up until this point, has been the only real Buster support. There's definitely units like Nightingale who give 50% Buster, but she doesn't give any of the other good stuff that uh, Merlin gives, and isn't like a really... <laughs> Good. Like, I think the only one that I would consider a buster support of some kind is, like, units who are, like, weirdly built. Like, for example, um, William Shakespeare. Pretty decent uh, buster support, I would say. Uh, like, he can end up being kind of like a mini Merlin if you're building him correctly. I think Hans can kind of work in a similar way. Let me just look at him just to be sure. In terms of crit damage, he can definitely be that for you. Then charges their MP gauge for everything. Yeah, see? But you can see here. I was about to say it's not much, but at the same time, hey, it's... I think for, because it lasts for three turns, he's technically giving 10% more MP gauge than what a, one Merlin gives. So fair enough. And then a, uh, a different kind of support. Um, uh, support uh, Noble Phantasm here. But you kind of got like William Shakespeare, you got Hans... You got Helena, and then you really don't have much after that, to be honest. Like I said, Nightingale, and I think Quetz. But the only reason I'm bringing them up is because they have a skill that can target any ally that buffs Buster, but they can't really be considered a Buster support in the same way that Buster needs. Like Merlin, when he came out, was just giving so much what of what Buster needs to everyone. So it's kind of like... It's kind of strange to kind of be in a situation because we're year six. It took them, like, I think Merlin was the first year anniversary unit, I think. Yeah, I think he was. It took them five years to kind of replace Merlin from what he was, which was being the main buster support. And it taken so long, you would kind of think, like, yo. And Merlin is so good, you wouldn't actually suspect him to be um, replaceable in some way. 
But the current landscape of JP, Merlin has been actually replaced as the, kind of the go-to unit for a while now. And it's been like that since Castoria came out. Because I'm saying over here, like, yo, Tomovo is great, but she doesn't give the defensive stuff that would mean that you would still run him, right? Like, no matter what you say, you can say all you want about her. Yay, she's good at looping. Yay, she gives so much attack and defense. And the crit damage lasts for three turns. Great. But at the end of the day, you're fighting against someone and you need some defense. Vich is not there in your corner. You have to kind of hope to kill him very quickly. And Merlin is your dude for that. But the thing is that JP did, which is what a lot of people now are waiting and summoning for, is that kind of Castoria a year ago replaced him as the go-to unit. If there was an 11 out of 10 unit, it, it is Castoria in every such way. Even some Buster people have been using Castoria, not for her third skill, but for her first skill and her second skill, because it gives MP generation for three turns, and it gives, in total, 30% um, MP here. I think it's 20% here, but then also 30% up to MP rate, which is very good. Um, and she gives invulnerability on her uh, Noble Phantasm, and she gives an even better version of it, which is the Anti-Purge Defense, which cannot be pierced. You can only really get rid of it if you're a unit that uses removal. So, in a lot of people's eyes, Castoria kind of already took away Merlin's 11 out of 10 spot, and he dropped down from what was basically one of the most perfect units you could imagine he went from like a 10 to a 9.5 <laughs> like it wasn't a steady drop but it was enough to make people go whoa like you never thought you'd see the day but you know the day came and that's why i think a lot of jp japanese players specifically because there's also no for american play people who play japanese the japanese game but whenever you ask them in polls hey who do you think deserves a buff one of them is Merlin. They're like, yo, give Merlin a buff, man. He needs something else. And I think it's true. He maybe does need a little bit more. I think if anything needs to be buff, it's this first skill. Because it is basically just kind of a glorified charisma. Uh, I don't think they're going to buff the third skill. Because the crit damage, if this lasted for three turns, would be kind of insane. So they're not going to do that, I don't think. Second skill, you could probably buff a little bit. It's still grant invincibility. Um, but you can probably buff, give it like one other thing, like have NP gain on one of these. If there's one thing that they could kind of buff him and they could give him NP gain. But chances are, if they're going to buff him, they're just going to give him his original um, Noble Phantasm, which is you can only really find in Babylonia. And they changed it because it was too strong. <laughs> so they might revert and give him that version of the noble phantasm but it's you know it's strange it's a strange new world that we live in so yeah on the north america side i am definitely waiting two years and i think i am definitely going to i was actually kind of debating whether or not i was going to be summoning for merlin you know because no matter what i felt about um buster stuff i was like oh you know what he's still merlin he's still extremely good and he's still extremely defensive um but now, I kind of just want to go wait the two years for Vich, so I don't think I'll be summoning for him at all. And I think what ends, what ends up going to be happening is that because I'm also going for our uh, Castoria over here, I am going to be kind of having a defensive unit. I already have a pretty good defensive team on my side, so I don't really feel um, that too hungry for a good defensive unit, which is what Merlin is now. He's extremely good on defense. It also has amazing offensive skill in his third skill um but i'm definitely on someone who's like you know not I'm, the merlin is not one of my favorite characters of fake grand order so i don't have the really the feel or the need to want to own him um and obviously for someone who loves merlin hey later on you're gonna get a unit that's gonna work great with your merlin like keep loving your unit i'm not someone who's anti a unit just because someone is now their new meta leader. If anything, you can just have a, you just have a new person to kind of use with Merlin that you so want. Um, I don't think you need to look at it so doom and gloom. I think you need to look at it as this is not a game that really 
discards units because every unit can kind of beat every stage if you plan it out good enough. Like, even though I mentioned Vich isn't great on defense, you could totally find a way to make her <laughs> offensive if you wanted. I don't know, put it up with Jean and just have infinite um, invulnerability if that's what you want or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically my thoughts on the matter. I felt like I needed to make something because I feel like there was a lot of people going like, I wasted so much going for Merlin and I'm just here to tell you it wasn't a waste. Unless you didn't get him. In which case, yeah, it's a waste, and Fago should really invest in a pity system, because then you would have had your Merlin. I'm on your side on this. But if you're someone who got Merlin, and you're feeling bummed out, like, oh, he got replaced, he's replaced in two years? He's not replaced. He's just getting a stronger companion to go with Buster, and for sure, Buster has needed something. Because around the time of Quick, there was definitely feelings of like, hmm, Quick's really the thing to go for here. And then once Arts came out, it was like, damn, Arts has basically the best of both worlds. And you had Quick that was like, well, at least we can still three turns. And at that point, you had Buster going, well, now we're hard mode. Now we're, you know, it's harder for us to win some stuff. And that's not really what you want. <laughs> that's, I don't think, what a lot of people want. I think a lot of people were saying that's what they wanted. But if they actually wanted a hard mode, they wouldn't be using Merlin. <laughs> that's maybe the most, like, I guess... A copium is the right word. If you're someone saying like, oh, it's so much harder for me to play Buster and you're using Merlin, you are not playing hard for go. You are still playing easy for go. <laughs> hard for go is doing the 99 turn thing. It's doing it with like Georgius as your main unit. That's actual hard mode. It's trying to win <laughs> against the ultimate battle against Gota with fucking Matahari, that's actually hard mode. <laughs> like, using units that are not good is hard mode. Using amazing units is not you giving yourself a challenge. <laughs> but I digress. That's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Um, hope I was able to kind of talk a little bit about my thoughts here. Again, you can leave your thoughts down below. I'm always afraid of doing one of these style videos because I'm always afraid it's going to be filled with people who don't care or people who are just going to be like super negative, but I trust you guys. You guys have been very nice um, going for it. I think there's only been one or two cases of someone kind of going like, I think you're wrong on this, and then when I corrected them, they didn't say anything more. So, all good. I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good day. Peace out. Bye-bye.